It's getting cold. Stay warm. Stay warm, kids. This has got some kit here from 2003 when I lived in uh, Belgium and Germany. This is actually team stock, team kit from Kai Hundemark. And I got this Domo hat from Van Eyck Sport, 2003, their annual sale. Let's get into it. How to stay motivated. How to stay motivated for your weight loss lifestyle. What's the, what am I drinking here? This is, what do you think this is? Oh, cat fur, nice. And uh, this is sugar. This is maltodextrin, fructose, glucose, and sucrose. So we've got, how many sugars in there we got? Mmm, mmm. This lights up your brain. Mm. Oh, I'm a sugar gourmet. And that's one reason, a big reason, I don't need caffeine or stimulants to function. All right? People are like, oh, you're so wired and you're so geared up. Like, what do you take? It's like, bro, sleep, water, sugar. They're the most important things. They weren't better than anything. You know, I love doing stims back in the day. You know, but you have to come down from those things. There's no come down from sleep. There's no come down from water. There's no come down from sugar. People say, oh, you get a sugar crash. That's simply you've ran out of sugar, okay? Simple as that. You know, like, it's like sleeping. Oh, you, you ran out of sleep. You need more sleep. You, know, you ran out of water, you need more water. You need more sugar, you need more sugar. Simple as that. So let's talk about how to stay motivated. And we'll get into those things as well. How to stay motivated in your weight loss path. So question this morning was from a coaching group. I do a coaching group, so does Natasha. Uh, if you want more information, go to durod.com or check out Get Fit with Natasha. And we, so we have a coaching group where you can ask us direct one-on-one -on -one questions and they'll be answered. So I thought we'll do a video response to this one. Uh, some of the many videos I do is as video responses from the group. So, how to stay motivated on your lifestyle. All right, this goes for anything, but let's talk about weight loss. So this person's written in, they're six foot tall, that same height as me, I'm six foot. I'm probably about, I don't know, I'm between 70 and 74 kilos at the moment, I don't know. I don't weigh myself. And uh, this person is 106 kilos. So he says, I'm doing everything you say, Harley. I'm 106 kilos. I'm feeling, uh, what was the word, overwhelmed or underwhelmed or, you know, a bit like, you know, what's going on? You know, And I would too, you know. But this is where we have to understand the human body. All right, this is, this is a great book to read if you really want to geek out and stuff. You don't have to read this book. You can just Google up the human starvation experiment. Dr. Ansel Keys, where he starved people. He starved people on purpose for the sake of working out how many calories does the body need and how does it respond from starvation, etc. And so Ansel Keys basically discovered the, the, the condition which is called post-starvation obesity and post-starvation hyperphagia. So let's use some real world examples. Go to Instagram, you see these bikini models. They take clenbuterol, they take oxandrolone, they take a lot of caffeine and ECA stacks and all that stuff, and they starve themselves down, they train, 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 get this like tote and ripped ad look, they lose all their boobs, they lose a lot of their hair, they get big hair extensions or boob drop, etc. which is fine, I'm just saying this is what happens. And then, a week after the competition, if they post photos, you see that their face... Or they recycle the photo for the rest of the year. But you don't actually see what happens to them, really. But some of them are going, hey, look. You know, this is what happened to me. One example is a girl called Stephanie Buttermore. Go check her out. Stephanie Buttermore. Just Google her up. And no hate here. Just, just using these real world examples. And so she took drugs. She got drugs from her boyfriend, Jeff Nippard, who's a steroid-using bodybuilder, which is fine. All the guys use steroids out there. So she would have used oxandrolone and, and uh, clean butyl, etc. Probably got some really bad side effects from that and said, hey, I'm not doing this anymore. And then the post-starvation hyperphagia kicks in. That's where you just, rah, 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 you're all in on the food. All your brain can think about is like food. It's like, you know, when you hit puberty and you're a boy, or maybe you're a girl as well. I can't speak because, you know, from personal experience, but uh, when you're a guy and your balls drop and your testosterone goes up and you're like, girls, you know? So when you do these bikini comps or water fast or juice fast or any period of starvation, forced or accidental, then when you go back into real world, your body's just like, food, where is the food, bro? And you're thinking, you're eating and you're thinking about eating, like, what am I going to eat next? And you're just, and you're just chowing down. 
You are chowered down, man. Like no, but no, no, no tomorrow. Yeah, this isn't the raw food world. This isn't the carnivore world, the keto world, or any world where carbs are restricted to some degree, either on purpose or accidental. If you're a raw foodist, a fruitarian, most of your diet's carbs, for sure. That's fantastic. But it's so hard to get enough carbs all the time that you can get so hungry. You're gonna, and you're going to be eating all these nuts and stuff. And then you're going to get more. And then it's just like, you're just like, ah, you're going crazy. You know? And that's hyperphagia, where you're just. You just can't even hear what people are saying. You're just like, dude, give me the food. You're reading food magazines. You're so hungry. You're watching you know, Gordon Ramsay on YouTube. You're, you know, you're, eating. No, you're just a food obsessed. And that's okay. Right? People are like, I need to take phenomen and take pills and take SSRI meds and stop thinking about food. Oh, no, no. Eat, man. But just eat carbs and keep it vegan and keep it low fat. So the post starvation obesity, which is what happens next, is, has a ceiling on it, okay? Now, if Stephanie Barlamore, if she went vegan and did my program, sugar, fruits, and starches, she wouldn't be as as big as she is now. She doesn't like that. You can see her, when she poses, she's putting her arm up like that to make it look skinny versus like that to make it look bigger. You know, she'd do stuff like that. Or she'll like put it behind herself. You know what I mean? Body acceptance, guys. Let me hide myself and angle so I'm looking thinner. That's not body acceptance. She doesn't like where she's at now. And and that's important to be honest about that. Okay, don't hide it. All right? Just be honest about it. Just be open about it. Yeah. You can't help people if you're hiding your feelings. You just be open, all in. All in, man, is all in. Your emotions, everything, all in. Okay, guys, I took drugs in the past. My boyfriend takes drugs. He lies about it. We're going all in because we want to help you. That's you, you can't help people by bullshitting them. Stephanie, Jeff, you can't, all right? But that's the fitness industry, where these people take these drugs, starve down, don't talk about that. They just say, I'm disciplined, I work hard. You work hard on a shit ton of drugs and a shit ton of stimps, okay? Simple as that. Now, and so then people do these things. They do a water fast, or they do the clenbuterol, or they do the juice thing, or they do the eat once a week or once a day or whatever, it's any form of calorie restriction, all right? That's going to trigger post star. That's starvation, man. When you're denying your body of carbs, your body's like, I want so, like, it's like this. It's like, oh, oh, there's sugar here. Sweet. I want some of that. Oh, no, you can't. No, 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 no you can't. You know, like that's starvation now. That's starvation now. So the only time that would be appropriate is if you go to a running race, and you'll have a little bit of sugar, but you can't have a big meal because it'll be bouncing on your belly. Okay, that's not starvation because you'll have it in an hour's time. But if you're going through the day and go, oh, I want that, I can't have that, I can't have those sweets, I can't have that. If you're denying the body of sugar grams, then you are starving yourself. And then when you go back into refeeding phase, and you go, oh my God, I'm getting fat, I better do another diet. And then, and just, over time you get bigger and bigger and bigger and crazier and crazier and crazier and your husband or your wife which probably soon be your ex <laughs> are going man like I didn't sign up to this nonsense man this is a freaking roller coaster alright so that's why I would never ever date anyone who is scared of refined table sugar because that is like the red flag that's going to be a relationship nightmare compared to what it could be so if, if someone's not enjoying refined sugar, if they're like anti-refined sugar, you'd be like, that should be the first thing you should ask on Tinder or wherever. You know, I like refined sugar. I love refined sugar. And people are like, yeah, I like sugar too. Cool. If they're like, no, sugar's bad. Sugar's bad. And then you're like, okay, you're going to be a little prickling on the beer around. You know, and you're going to be running on steams and moody and so, oh my God. Like, how much lifetime do we want to waste around people who are obsessed in a negative obsession about their weight, you know, I gained a kilo, what does that mean, like, oh man, the amount of women that I've had in my bed, or in my house, or in my hotel, and I'm like, this is pretty good, and then they start talking about their weight, and I'm like, oh, you really going to go there, and this ain't going to happen, you know, and I'm just like, okay, cool, this, that sex was really good, or whatever, but I'm just like, nah, you, you're hot, but nah, this isn't going to be lasting longer than a day or two, or a month, or, you know, see ya, bye. Because it's just, it's like, come on, man. That that stuff never ends. if Unless you end it. Because these people, let's say you get to your goal weight, 
This video is real time, by the way. No one's talking about this stuff on YouTube. If they do, please link it down below and I'll give them a thumbs up. This is basically my experience of training thousands of people, you know, and, and in getting them from like out of shape into incredible shape, into like, you know, social media influencer shape, you know, without drugs, without starving, just with carbs, sleep, water, sugar, starches, fruits. And so you have this situation where these people have this obsession and it's an eating disorder, disordered eating by a thinking, it's a body dysmorphia, it's all these things. It's a mental health situation, it's no doubt about it. It's mental health. And the only way to help that isn't with drugs, isn't to medicate yourself into numbness, no. It's to face it full on and identify what is the phobia about. Is, what, is, what does it even matter if you're 100 kilos or 50 kilos? Like, what does it even matter? It doesn't matter. All that should matter is your health, okay? If you've got hypertension, high blood pressure because you're fat, that's not good. That's not body acceptance, man. That's like you've got a health issue. Guess let's get control of that. Let's get on the Dura One protocol. Let's bring your blood pressure down. If you're underweight and your dong doesn't work, and you're getting, you know what I mean? You're getting micro banana eat symptoms, then you need to eat more calories, carb calories, so boys, your testosterone can go up a bit so you can have full functioning gonadal system. All right? Same with a girl. If you're you know, 17 year old girl, train, 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 you know, and you've got no period, that's not good for your bone density, okay? So you need to have a month off training. Oh my God, no, no. Have a month off training, get your ovulation cycle back, go back to training, and maybe do like 80% or 70% volume. You know, just keep it chill and you'll get way fitter and you'll be more fun to be around. And the guys that like you like will go, actually, this chick's pretty cool. She's not just crazy. That's really cool. You know, so you, you increase your self value massively on the market and you're easier, more fun to be around for yourself when you drop this body dysmorphia bullshit. Because I'll tell you what, um, and this video isn't for the person who wrote the question, this video is for everybody out there, okay? If, it, if you're depressed, Let's say I'm 105 kilos or whatever. Let's say I'm you know, out of shape compared to what I want to be. If I can't be happy out of shape, I will never be happy in shape, ever, right? Because that's not true, that's not true. That's true. I've been out of shape before. And like, oh, you know, when I get fit, I'll be happier. And I've been ridiculously fit, like fitter than, I'm right now I'm fitter than 99.9% .9 of the population that's ever lived. That's not gonna make you happy though, okay? So I've been down there, that sports day in school, no one wants me to like, you know, gun elite level fitness of like, just feeling fit on fit on fit, like racing 20 old dudes up mountains and just enjoying it. And if you can't be happy at any of those things, you won't be happy ever because your happiness will, won't be real, won't be unconditional. Right? If your happiness is like, okay, I'm seven watts per kilo, I'm six watts per kilo, I'm two watts per kilo, whatever, then your happiness has, is conditional. So instantly something can happen, you get an injury, you get sick, or what something happens, all of a sudden psh, your happiness is pulled from you. And that's no way to live. So people think, oh, if I just lose the weight, if I get the abs, if I get a boob job, if I get this, I get that, I'll get 100 mil subscribers on YouTube, I'll get my house paid off, then I'll be happy. No, no, you won't. Because then, because your happiness is based on conditions. So then you get to your goal, and then your human brain, which is always looking for what's wrong, because that's a survival mechanism, the brain's always looking for what's wrong. In any situation, what's wrong? Because there could be a tiger over there, or a woolly mammoth, or whatever, or a snake, or a spider. Like You have to think of, in nature, okay, well, what's wrong in this situation? Okay, it looks pretty good, yeah, okay. What's in the water, is that a big snake over there? You, you, that's your brain. So you get to your goal, and you get that goal accomplishment, like, yeah, I fucking did it, yeah, I'm the fucking boss, yeah. And then somebody will be, you'll be like, oh, hang on, what, what's, oh. And then someone will say, something, oh, your earlobes look a bit weird. Oh, yeah, your, your nipples look a bit funny. Oh, you know, I mean, you're too lean now. Oh, do I? You know, so then you, you know, you get all these, especially on social media, these commentaries, and you just be crushed. You'll be even more depressed because you'll be like, I put in all this work, I got to here, I got this body, I got everything, and people are still making fun of me. <laughs> no, 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 no. Because when you live for their approval, when you live for their approval, you'll die by their rejection. Simple as that. This is why we see so many celebrities out there. Hollywood, Robin Williams, Whitney Houston, they take their own lives, man. That's crazy. Look how much money and fame they had. Right? Look how much money and fame they had. Getting attention from the opposite gender or the same gender, whatever they're into. You know what I mean? So don't ever think that you'll be happy with more money because you won't be, you'll have more stress. You'll be happy for the day. Okay, I get a warm bed and it's all good, but then you'll find something wrong with that bed. Oh, this bed's noisy, this bed smells. But when you first get into that bed, 
after being homeless for a week or whatever, you're like, oh man, this is the best bed in the world. But then your brain will be like, going, hey, no, this is not so good, you know. That's just the human brain. So never, ever, 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 ever put your happiness based on the condition of an, a goal being achieved because it won't last. And then you'll feel that drop and you'll be like, chuk, chuk, chuk. And you see these people out there, these A-type personalities, always chasing, chasing, chasing. Never, ever happy. Never happy. Coffee to Adderall to Ritalin to Modafinil to SSRI to alcohol to cocaine to strippers to all sorts of crazy stuff just to chase a bit of happiness. Just for that dopamine serotonin hit. Which you get, save you a lot of money here, you get that from sugar, you get it from fruit, you get it from carbohydrate because we're carbohydrate burners. And, you know, and dopamine, you get it from hugs and, you know, doing good things. Ah, mm. oh, so good. That's so good. I wish I lived in a world where the fruit was just all around me, just dropping 20, 30 bricks value fruit every minute of the day. That would be paradise. Until then, refined sugar, that's your friend. And uh, so, yeah, if you're not happy now, man, if you're not happy out of shape at the back of the pack, you won't be happy at the front. Because you'll get to the front, like all these superstar sports. Look, look how many sports stars have massive depression. Oh, no, they don't hide it. They're killing it. They're crushing it. Remember that guy who, like, burned his family in a car in Australia a few months back? If you go to the Instagram feed or YouTube or whatever, you would be like, wow, that's a happy family. I can see through all that BS. Huh? The average person isn't in my situation. And I don't say to me, hey, I'm, I'm Mr. Cool. I'm say that I've got some unique perspectives and you can learn from me. I'm not over the fence looking around and go, wow, I can see that. And you maybe you're down the bottom of the fence. I'm like, hey, this is crazy. You don't want to be here. You'd be like, no, 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 I want to, I want to be on the fence. No, no, dude, the grass is greener here, man. It's not over there. That, that grass is greener mentality is going to destroy you, man. It's going to destroy you. So the, to stay motivated on weight loss, get rid of the scales Understand that happiness is only experienced in the present moment. Right? Only experienced in the present moment. You won't be happy when you get to goal. It won't be real happiness. It'll be like that fleeting happiness. Like you go and get some new shoes. Or you get a new phone. You go, oh, new phone today. You know, got the new Apple or Samsung or whatever. People will be like, oh, we've got a new phone. And then a week later or a month later, it's like, oh, yeah, cool, whatever. All right? So it's, it's just, it's fleeting. Don't chase fleeting shit for Genuine happiness. That's just a, happiness is a choice in the moment. Happiness is a choice in the moment. It's a choice to feel happy. It's a choice to feel happy. Okay? Simple as that. I'll tell you another little story. Um, in 2008, I was dead broke, living on welfare. And uh, I was up in... And homeless as well. And I was bike touring around. And I was doing house sits and just camping out and just wherever. I had no fixed address. And I remember... Riding with my partner at the time then, and uh, freely. And we're up in Darwin, and I had, a, I had a stop for pee, pee pee, which is what you do when you eat a lot of fruit, which is good. And uh, so I'm just stopping there, and she's like, oh, again, like, oh, God, and she's like, I'm going to keep going. So yeah, I'll catch up to you. So she's riding down the highway, and I'm stopping there, and I'm like, oh, oh, there's 10 bucks. That's pretty cool. And I go walk over and pick up the 10 bucks. And as I grab it, there's like a $20 note next to it. I'm like, Ooh, wow, this is my lucky day. And I grab that and look up, there's a 50. And I'm like, whoa, 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 what's going on here? And I look around, there's this money scattered all around. And I'm just like, okay. And about an hour later, I had $590. Right? Just, it's just scattered everywhere around, like within like a 50 meter sort of radius. The wind had blown a bit of money. And um, and then Freddie comes back. She's like, what are you doing? And I'm just like, you know, um, actually, no, she came back beforehand. She's like, oh, let's go, let's go. And I'm like, no, there's, there's more here. She's like, oh. You know, and I'm like, you, you got to do your thing. I'm, I'm going to stay here until I think it's done. And an hour later, that's right. An hour later, then I was like, okay, I, could, I can't find no more. It's been 20 minutes since I found any. I think it's done. And so the lesson I learned then is you can be impatient. Let's go. Let's in, 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 in. Or you can be like, hang on. The universe has given me something here. I'm going to put the time in and invest and reap. And that's what I did. And that's that's just, that's how I live life. All right? Whatever happens to me in my life, I pause and say, how can I spin this to absolutely fucking win this? Right? And now I've made some terrible decisions in my life. But every time I make a bad decision and I get punched in the face for it by the universe, 
okay, okay, what was the lesson there to learn? How could I have done it better? I don't go, oh, the universe sucks, the world sucks, society sucks, people suck, girls suck, guys suck, people, nye, nye. I'm like, okay, pause. What's the lesson in here? What's the take home? And that's the champion mindset that anyone can have. I didn't have that when I was eight years old. I was like, mummy, give me Milo, mummy, give me McDonald's. I was just like a little beta boy. Yeah? You gotta cultivate that. This is not born, this is cultivated. Right? This is a desire. A desire. You know? And to have that desire every day, that's a choice. Yeah. And some days you'll have it really strong, some days it'll be like overt, you know, you're covert. But it's just a choice at the moment. And people would go, I'm gonna do cocaine, I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna feel like charge. Yeah, when the cocaine wears off, so does your motivation. So you're going to take coke every day and cook your whole brain cells? Nah, it's not going to work. Didn't for Bob Williams. Happiness is just a choice in the moment. And the quality of life, for me, the quality of your life is the quality of the communication you can have with yourself and other people. People around me in my peer circle, they know I'll tell them anything that's going to help them. I don't care about their feelings. All right? I'm just going to give them the absolute truth. And that pushes a lot of people away out of your life. It pushes away the time wasters. It pushes away people who aren't ready for growth yet. Maybe they'll come back later and say, you know, Harley, you're right. Boom, boom, boom. And that's cool. Great. But just be real, right? Just push. Use, that as a, use realness as a filter. And so that's why I have a lot of lovers on the YouTube and a lot of haters on YouTube. Actually, just small haters. But they're vocal. They're passionate haters. They're lover haters. And they, they, we, we appreciate them. Yeah. And so if you don't have that, if you don't have people really loving what you're doing and really hating what you're doing, you know, like... If you, you type my name into a forum, you know, what do you think of Dune Rider? You know, and people are like, oh, Dune Rider's cool or whatever. And then you have the people, the haters, like, oh, man, like, oh, and they'll be, like, just passionate, man. Just passionately hating. You know, it won't be like, yeah, I don't like him. He's a douche. It'll be like, oh, you know, it, it evokes emotion in them. And that becomes from being real and being happy. Because other people, when they see that, like, oh, I don't like that. You know, I don't like that at all. Because it's a mirror on them that they should be doing better. They can be doing better. So the best thing you can do for depressed people is not be one. The best thing you do for people with eating disorders, etc., is not be one. The best thing you do for yourself is not worry about your weight. Right? Unless you're a boxer, you're going to be 70 kilos and Friday night, okay, then you have to keep an eye on things. But if you have to keep an overt eye on things, you're fighting the wrong, the wrong weight class. Okay. If you have to really extremely cut down your diet, etc., to fight in a certain weight class, you're in the wrong weight class. If your mood's suffering, you're in the wrong class, bro, okay? Or you're doing the wrong diet. You're cutting your carbs, you've got the adaptive thermogenesis kicking in. So how to stay motivated for weight loss? It's not even about motivation. It's just about being, you know, being spiritual. It's being, you know, being a bit esoteric, being a bit woo woo -y. It's like, if you're on your deathbed today, would you care if you're 106 kilos or 75 kilos, you wouldn't, right? If you're about to die, if you've got five minutes to live, would you jump on the scale and go, well, I wish I was saying that. No, you wouldn't. You wouldn't, all right? So have perspective and context in life. Your mood is your biggest asset, all right? It's not your tits, it's not your face, it's not whatever. That might be on social media for like, hey, likes and approval, yeah, yeah, yeah. But your, your mood is the biggest thing, all right? Your mood's the biggest thing, okay? And that's that because that's what that's how you feel. And if you go through life as a billionaire and most of your feelings are frustrated, pissed off, and angry, that's your experience of life as a billionaire. You're the frustrated, aggressive, angry, psychotic billionaire. Or you could be the psychotic, frustrated, angry, dead broke person on the street with a drug and alcohol addiction addiction. Or you could be the billionaire with a drug and alcohol addiction. <laughs> Yeah, you know, so your mood is, is that's the foundation for life, right? So you, everyone around that, will, everyone around you will feel that mood. You ever, you ever done a job, been at a workplace, and there's a staff member who's just always in a bad mood, or they're just really yo-yoing. You're like, oh, you, being around them is like, oh, I just hate being here. Yeah, or you got a boss who's just like a tosser. Their mood is a shit house. They have the caffeine withdrawals, anxiety the next day. It's the ooh, a hole or a bitch. And so, oh man, that's toxicity, right? So mood's everything, right? It does, and that's why people stay in jobs just for the money because the mood isn't keeping them there, you know? I would rather work in a job where I was getting paid way less but the mood was good, the vibe was good than being somewhere making a lot of money and it's just cutthroat and fake and just, oh man. 
can't do that. I can't do that. All right. So your mood is your, in my opinion, your biggest aesthetic. And I've been around people who are really good looking, etc., or whatever. Get your hormones flowing and stuff, but their mood was just like, oh man, this is an anti-hormone now. <laughs> your mood's an anti-hormone. This is so beta. This is like anti-hormone. I can feel the testosterone just leaching, just draining out of my blood right now. This is like anti-hormone discussion. Oh man, you know? And and how you make people feel when you're around them, that's that's everything. That's what people remember. Right? That's what people remember. How you how you make people feel. Okay. So it's it's not about being fake and telling people what they want to hear. It's being real, and and over time, people as they mature in life, and, and they'll value your realness. At the start, you'll be abrasive, and like oh yeah 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 yeah. But over time, as people spiritually evolve, they'll they go yeah no, you're right. You know, it's just a bit like what's an example? Um, okay, it's a bit like a pair of shorts here. There's a pair of shorts off the floor, and these are sort of low cut shorts. You know, back back in the day. <coughs> also dusty shorts. Back in the day, I would have, when I was back in my fashion days, I'd be like, oh, these shorts are too short, you know, these two shorts, I can't wear these, maybe just for running, that's it. But now, I wear these all the time when it's warm. Because I appreciate the mood these shorts let me be in. I've got good airflow, I've cut out the inner, so my balls aren't getting strangled. And yet, these, these shorts are very functional. These shorts support my mood. You know, these shorts, shorts support my mood. But at the start, I wouldn't have worn shorts like that back in the day. Oh, my legs are skinny. Oh, I can't do my legs. Whatever, just BS, be the crap you'd say to yourself as a 15-year-old or whatever. You know? But now I appreciate shorts like that. Okay? So you, you sort of come full circle in life. Simple as that. I remember when I was eight years old, um, my mum hadn't done the washing that week. And rather than learn how to use a washing machine, which is not too hard, I was grizzling. And I had, these, had to wear these pink shorts to school. And I was crying. I was like, oh, I think my brother made fun as well. I was like, oh, you have to wear pink shorts to school, Harley. Yeah, they're going to make fun of you. And so I felt this massive social rejection in my head. And I was freaking out. I remember it. I remember it. I remember it. <laughs> it was like, it was like 35 years later or whatever. And I was going to have to wear these pink shorts to school. And now I'm wearing, you know, whatever. Like, I don't care. But back then I made it a big deal. And I was ca causing all this stress in myself. I was going like psychotic. I was going like, mom's like, just, just calm down. It's all right. And my brother's like, eh, just calm down, buddy, you know? He's just rubbing it in because he's loving it, I'm reacting. And now I've looked back and totally laugh. But at the time, I was like, you guys are fucking, you know, yeah, yeah. I was totally stressing my cortisols up. I'm like, you know, aging myself as an eight-year-old because I'm stressing out about something that doesn't even matter. So how often do we stress ourselves about shit that doesn't matter? And then a day later, or an hour later, or a month later, or 10 years later, like, you know what? That was really stupid to stress about that. Okay. That's called spiritual growth. So if you're worried about being 106 kilos, if it's stressing you out, which it obviously is, then that's the universe saying you need to learn this lesson. And the universe will keep giving us and giving us and giving us lesson until we go, okay, I get it. I'm cool with it. Whatever weight I am, I'm happy. Yeah. And I'm going to focus on the health and performance, etc. Not the weight. Because when you focus on health and performance, your weight naturally just sets. Okay. When you focus on weight, your health and performance suffer. Because you're obsessed and you're psychotic and negatively attached to a number that doesn't even matter. Health performance is number one. That's mood right there. When your health performance is good, your mood's going to be good as well. It's going to follow that. Mood follows action. So if you're focusing on weight, then the action is negative. The performance is going to be down. The health's going to be down because you'll be stressing. And we're stressing because we can't have good health, no matter how good we're eating. If we're stressing... Like again and again and again, that's not good. All right, that's not good. A bit of stress, great, but stressing about shit doesn't matter. Pink shorts, long shorts, short shorts, whatever, doesn't matter. So hopefully that helps. How to stay motivated is have perspective. Always stay carved up, hydrated, be a daily movement, etc. This one's more about the spiritual side of it, the happiness, because we all want to lose weight or get fit or have money or approval or status or whatever, because we want to have approval from other people. You know, and that makes us feel good, but it shouldn't, because if we don't get that approval, then we'll be depressed. Right? If your happiness is based on approval, you constantly keep ch chase. I want approval from someone with a blue tick. Okay, uh, two blue ticks. Okay, a, a present. Oh, I see it, like, all this. Crap. Yeah, and that's why people that are often at the top are so depressed and so psychotic, man, because they're constantly chasing this stuff that doesn't matter. 
They're like, oh, I can't scratch my nose on YouTube. People might not like that. That's just being real. I'm a human. <laughs> I've got itchy nose on itch it. I don't care about someone going, hey, in the comments, he's got a rat nose. He's got a nose like a rat. <laughs> like, whatever. You know, it's, uh, you, you got to have a sense of humor in life to succeed. And for weight loss, it's, uh, don't even, don't, even using that word weight loss is beta, isn't it? You know, I use it a lot just as a clickbait title, but weight loss, how to lose weight. It's, if you're looking up videos like that, that's great. Because you're interested in, you know, in sort of positive things, but you also want to have a detachment from that as well. That you're like, whatever, you know. It's not about not caring about yourself. Because people go, well, if I don't care about my weight, it means I don't care about myself. That's the total BS. That's total BS. Yeah, total BS. When you focus on your health and performance, that's caring about yourself. And your performance can be your mood. It can be your time trial on a bike. It can be how fast you can play with the kids, etc. That's performance. Life performance. Okay. Life performance. When you ride a bike, you burn less fossil fuels. When you play with the kids, you keep your kids, you know, what they need. When you give your partner what they need, then you know that's that's performance. When you're a good boss, you're a good employee, when you're rising other people up by being honest and real and giving them tough love and, and real support, that's performance. Right? Performance isn't just about winning the running race and going, yeah, I'm the boss. That's one thing, that's cool, but it's not the biggest thing out there, is it? So performance and health, focus on that, weight loss, pff, don't even worry about weight loss, man. Don't worry about the weight, unless you're underweight. But then again, when you're focusing on health and performance, you, if your weight needs to come up, it'll come up. If your weight needs to come down, it'll come down, okay? Hopefully that helps. Play it again, I'll put this on my podcast, you can listen to it there. And uh, that's just real time, man, real time. Listen to, this, listen to this again and again and again until it sinks in. Happiness is a choice in the moment. Happiness is best shared. Sleep water sugar. Don't worry about the weight. That'll just, your body will, Come and go as it is. Yeah, it's as simple as that. And stay away from stimulants, man. Like, especially if you use them in the past. Like, there's just they can burn you out, man. Create cortisol issues, hormonal issues, etc. Have perspective in life. You know, go and hang out in the slums. That's the best thing people can do. Like, go and hang out in the slums. You know, and see what real struggle is. That's real struggle. You know, that's real struggle. And go go to Manila or go to India. And just go and just go hang out in the slums. Dress up, dress dress down, you know, or dress real, dress to the occasion, and just be around these people. Especially Manila, like you got to go to Manila, man. Like the Filipinos are like something special going on there. It's 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 epic. Everyone should go to the slums and just just feel that humility and that humbleness and that that drive they have just to keep chipping away, you know, and uh, some some hardcore champion mindsets over in the Philippines like the people with the amputee people and the struggle is real time man it's like wow it's epic you know so going to the Philippines changed my old perception in life a lot uh, I always have a special place in my heart going there the slums it is it is epic and it just gives you such context you know people say oh, Harley you live in such a, a, a you live in a slum yourself it's like man this is this is like the Taj Mahal to me you know, I don't need much in life. You know, I need, as long as the roof's not dripping, but if it is, that's fresh water, isn't it? You know? <laughs> as long as the mosquitoes aren't coming in, well, they're, they're nature, I guess. You know, I don't need much in life to have happiness. You know? I need to be alive. Right? If, if I wake up and I'm alive, I'm happy. And then it can go from there. Good days or great days. There's no such thing as a bad day. No such thing as a bad day. Only if you choose it to be.